muscle contraction. Sarcomere is shortening and lengthening. How? That's what we're going to learn today. So how the muscles, when they contract, what's happening to the muscle cell or the myofiber? And remember, within the muscle cell, we have these small contractile units, the sarcomere, which again contains all the actin and myosin. And it's the myosin which is moving along the actin in such a way that it causes the muscle to shorten and contract. The myosin cross bridge cycle. So during muscle contraction, when the sarcomere begins to shorten, so the Z discs on either side of the sarcomere come close together, the actin filaments actually go over each other because in between the actin filaments is our thick filament, the myosin. So what we're going to see is how myosin directly interacts with actin and causes this production of force which in turn brings together the sarcomere or shortens the sarcomere triggering muscle contraction. So first we'll take a look at the slide that shows the step-by-step -step process and then we'll do a little live demonstration which should try to clarify things up a bit. In the very first step what we have is we have the myosin bound somewhere to the actin filament in one position. Then ATP comes into the system and ATP binds to the back of the head of the myosin. So myosin has a head region and part of the head binds and attaches to actin and the back end of the head has an ATP binding site. So ATP comes in and will bind to the back of the head of myosin. This will then cause myosin to come off of the actin filament so it stays bound, comes up, so releases from actin. Then ATP goes through hydrolysis, so ATP to ADP plus PI. Now, it's during this hydrolyzation that provides the energy for the myosin head to cock or move upward to a new position on the actin filament. So originally, this myosin started here. It detaches, hydrolyzes the ATP to ADP plus PI, and as you can see, it has moved forward and so myosin is a plus N directed motor protein. So basically on this side is the Z disc, which is where the plus end of the actin is. And that is the direction that myosin is going to move towards. So myosin moves towards the plus end of the actin filament. So again, when ATP gets hydrolyzed to ADP plus PI, the myosin will move towards the plus end of the actin, so up further to a new position further up on the actin filament will reattach to the actin filament at the new position and now we're going to lose the inorganic phosphate the PI and when we lose the PI this is actually going to produce the force so now the myosin will actually pull on the actin filament and this is known as the power stroke Let's take a look at a live demonstration now of this myosin cross bridge cycle just to get a better understanding of what's going on here. So what we have here is this yardstick. This yardstick will represent our actin filament. I will be playing the role of myosin. Well rather my arms and my hands will be playing the role of myosin. So remember Myosin has a head, which will be represented by my hand here in a fist form. It has an actin binding site, so the part of the myosin head that will bind to actin. And then on the back of the myosin head will be an ATP binding site, so where ATP comes in and binds. Okay. So, again, at the beginning we have our actin filament, we have our myosin attached to the actin, okay? So this is at the very beginning before anything has happened, okay? So the myosin is attached to the actin filament, okay? Now ATP comes in and will bind to the myosin head. This causes the myosin to release or be released from the actin filament. 
and now ATP gets hydrolyzed to ADP plus PI. So when this hydrolyzation occurs, this is going to cause the myosin to go from position 1 and move further upstream. So I go from here to here, and now I hydrolyze my ATP, so ADP plus PI causes the myosin head to cock forward further upstream. I will reattach now, so the myosin head reattaches to the actin filament in a new position. And now we go ahead and lose the inorganic phosphate, the PI. When we lose the PI, we cause what's known as the power stroke. Okay? So that's the power stroke. So when the myosin reattaches to the actin filaments further upstream of where it began, and we lose the inorganic phosphate, it will literally pull on the actin filament. And this is what causes and this is what causes the sarcomeres to shorten. So again, the sarcomere looks like this. When the myosin moves along the actin filament and the power stroke occurs, the contraction occurs. So the sarcomere shortens.